Hello, my wonderful students. I have a weird chunk of hair back here. <laughs> you guys don't ever tell me if my hair looks weird. I guess you'll just accept me how I am, and that's why I love you. I have a very special read aloud today that is full of amazing information that we will be using for our Thanksgiving research journal on Native Americans. Uh, it's a long book with a lot of information. So go potty, get some water, get a snack, <laughs> and then come on back when you are ready to listen, or maybe you're already ready to listen. I do have to show you one thing real quick. The orange ball, also known as Sherbert, is behind me in her cat bed snoring. Yeah, she's there snoring. I just had to show you that because it's hilarious. So if you hear any like soft gurglings, it's her. All right, so I have for you a Tappanum's Day, a Wampanoag Indian boy in Pilgrim Times. So we took a step into what it was like for the pilgrims the other day, and now we are going to look at what it was like for a Native American boy um, in the Wampanoag tribe. So there were many, many, many different Native American tribes and Wampanoag was just one of them. And actually, sadly, there were some Native American tribes that did not get along with the pilgrims. They fought and did not get along and a lot of them died. Um, there were some who got diseases and got sick from the pilgrims just because our germs are different and they sadly died. Uh, the Wampanoag tribe was one that they did manage to gain peace with the pilgrims and they really did help each other. So it just is kind of a sad part of our history that we just couldn't get along with people who were different. And I'm sure that Jesus was very sad watching that happen. So we just need to always remember to be respectful and kind, even when somebody looks or sounds different than us. Always, always, always. So this is Tapnum's Day by Kate Waters and photographs by Russ Kendall. So this will have photographs, not pictures or drawings, very similar to how Sarah Morton's day was. It was photographs, not drawings. So I love this book. It's got a lot of really cool information and the pictures are beautiful. So here we go. And oh, I'm going to also say, I will probably horribly mispronounce a lot of the words, but I am going to do my very best, but I'm probably mispronouncing a lot of these, but I'm going to do my best. Hello, invader. You coming to give me a good night kiss? Good night. And to hear Tappanum's day. Okay, well, this will count as your bedtime story. Okay, <laughs> but watch out because when I open the book, it's going to be right there. Okay. Ah, oh, green. Green. All right. We. Hello, my name is Tapenum. I am Wampanoag. Tapenum. Tapenum or Tapenum? Tapenum. I'm not sure. Tapenum. My people have lived on this land for all remembered time. When I was younger, strangers came from across the sea. We call them Wautukonuag, coat men. They set up a colony a half day's walk from here. Now they share the land with us. Today, I start on a plan to become stronger and to improve my hunting. Even though I've promised myself before, this time I am serious. Yesterday, I found out that the Nesog came and took away all the boys they had chosen for initiation. I was not chosen. Nasog are warriors and advisors to our Sachem, our chief. They are strong, skillful, wise, and kind. They choose boys who are strong in body and spirit. 
My friends and I all hoped to be picked. I am disappointed. This year I have grown so tall and I was sure they would choose me. I wonder why they didn't. Today, I will follow my plan. I will practice tracking animals, fletching my quokotash, my arrows, shooting straight and true, and learning stillness in the forest. And I will run long distances every day. He looks pretty serious, mm -hmm. huh? He's on. Very determined, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Ooh, I haven't been drinking enough water today. What do you think of this? Whoa, they live in huts. Mm -hmm. They would probably call them houses, though. Let's see. This is our summer planting ground near Namasket, where we live until the frosts come. The soil is good, and this year our corn is growing tall. The streams and ponds are full of fish. Animals are plentiful in the forest. Wosukumsqua, my mother, and my little sister, Nampakau, care for the corn. If they can keep blackbirds from eating it before it is ripe, we will have enough to last us all winter. Whoa. Look at that. How cool. Before the sun is up, it is quiet in our Witu, our house. I asked my father, Wishatun, to wake me early this morning so that he will know I am serious about training. My father hopes that I will become a snay. Nay, nays, niece. It would bring great honor to our family. So it looks like this is the inside of their home. And those are all the beds. And what do they have for blankets? Looks like they have animal skin for blanket. They make very good use of the animals that they that They, they use the meat and they use the fur to, to like. The skin, not just the fur. The skin and yeah. fur. Mm -hmm. They would even use the bones for tools, weapons. They'd make sewing needles. How else would they put their clothes together? They used every single bit of an animal that they killed. I prepare quietly. How? Go hunting so I won't wake my mother and sister. The breech clout that I tie around my waist is made of soft deer skin. I hang my stone knife around my neck. So here's the breech clout. Okay, he's putting his knife around his neck. Oh, I guess that's in that one. I check that my pouch is full of nuki, ground parched corn, and I tie it around my waist. My patan, my quiver, is new. I made it from the skin of a fox. I pick up my autom, my bow, and open the door flap to see the day. Lots of important tools. As I set out for the forest, the sun is rising. Oh, it's very late. She should be in bed, I should be in bed. It has not warmed the ground yet and the birds are just beginning to sing. I say prayers to our creator, Kitan, and to the spirits of the animals. I ask for success in hunting today since it is the first day of my serious training plan. I am eager to bring back a good catch to my mother. I have had nothing to eat all morning. It is best to hunt before the first meal because hunger makes the hunter grow more serious. Now I grow impatient. I am too hungry to wait, so I decide to rest and have some new keek. A little bit will quickly fill my stomach. So there's the dried, the parched corn. Parched means like you're dry, you're thirsty, you need water. Right? Sometimes if we dehydrate something, we take out the moisture. 
makes it lighter. Over. My brain is not getting enough oxygen. That's why I'm yawning. Walking through the forest, follow the animal paths. I look for droppings as signs that animals are nearby. What are droppings? Poop. It's their poop. We learned that from our pioneer um, book. Mm -hmm. It's droppings like... Um, like fox, or rabbit, yeah. or deer. And they would look at the droppings, at the poop. If it looked kind of shiny and wet, it was probably fresh. But if it was dark and dry looking, then the animal was long gone. It, if it was dry, it was called a chip. Oh, that I did not know. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what the pioneers called it? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it's not in here. I to bet burn, you. To burn, to burn their fire. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. Wow, listen to this one. I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I listen and watch. Many times I turn my head just as a rabbit disappears on at a place where there are many of the young green plants that rabbits like, I decide to stay still and wait. I shoot my Kru Quotash, but I am always too early. I break one when it hits a tree instead of a rabbit. Perhaps I should not have eaten so soon. I need to concentrate on hunting, but I can't stop wondering why I wasn't chosen for initiation this year. I put these thoughts aside. At last, I hit a rabbit and later on a squirrel. This is a good catch for me. Yay. Yay. I walk quickly back to the wee too, thinking of hot food. My arms and shoulders ache from drawing the autop so many times. I give my catch to my mother. She seems pleased, even though my father has found a, or has returned with a turkey. I think of how much strength it takes to shoot an animal that large. If I am this tired after one morning, I will I ever be that strong? Now the larger the animal, the more strength that you had to put in in holding your bow or maybe even using a spear. Maybe they use those because the arrow would have to get through the animal to successfully kill it. So it, this is a great place for him to start, but he wants to be here. Like now, he's got to be patient and give himself some grace. His mom looks happy. This is a great start. Build up that strength. Be patient. Mm -hmm. Don't I tell you guys be patient with yourselves? Yeah. Don't I tell you to be patient with yourself? You will get there. Sounds like he needs to be patient with himself. Yeah, like I, I want to get to be to hunt a turkey, a turkey right or a now. deer right now. Yeah, but we have to practice. Yeah. My mother gives my father a bowl of sobaheg, a bowl of stew, and numpa numpa cow, and I help ourselves. Noompakau talks on and on about her morning. A hundred birds came from the sky and I shouted and stomped my feet and sang loud songs and scared them away from the corn. Ooh, that looks pretty hearty. They've got their protein. They've got all kinds of stuff in there. It's very interesting to see what they would have eaten. Later, my friend Newtimus comes by to go fishing. On the way to the pond, we are quiet. We don't need to speak to know what the other is feeling. Finally, Newtimus says, I was sure you would be chosen this year, Tepnam. I'm sorry. The only good thing about it is that we can be together for another year, I say. Mm -hmm. We find our machine, our canoe. 
and set our lines with dried clam necks for bait. Ooh, how interesting. The fish are quiet today and we are only catching small ones. I tell Newtimus about my training plan to hunt every morning and to take a long run in the afternoon. I'll never keep up with you at running, he says, but I will come hunting with you. We can practice fletching our kukwatash. Even the small fish stop biting, so we pull the machine onto the shore it is time for my run. Mm -hmm. I ask Newtimus to come too. If we practice every day, we will be strong enough to run to the colony and back. Won't you like to see what the coat men are building now? But Newtimus shakes his head no and turns toward home. As I start to run, I see smoke in the distance. There are no planting grounds near here. Who would be making a fire? in the middle of the day, I wonder. But I don't slow down, even though I sometimes feel brave and other times feel scared. I wish that Newtimus was with me. The smoke is closer now. At the far end of the pond, I see the camp. Could it be the coatmen? I try to approach quietly like a warrior. It is an old man making a machine. I have seen him before. He is called Waban and people say he knows all the wisdom of our ancestors. Be respectful, I am quiet until he sees me. Quay, Waban greets me. Quay, I say, and I offer him the few fish I have caught. I hope that he will let me stay with him for a while. Perhaps he will know the secrets of being chosen or initiated. I think I remember reading that they would burn or scorch the inside to kind of seal the wood so it wouldn't leak. How cool is that? Boban sends me off to get water and more wood for his fire. He speaks of knowing my father and my mother. When he was younger, Boban was a powerful niece. When he asks me to stay, we cook the small fish. Then I ask him to help me practice fletching a kukwat. He shows me how he prepares the sinew and the glue. I watch him wrap the sinew around the quill end of the feathers and the shaft. It takes him a long time to finish just one kukwat. Oh. <laughs> There's the wood, he's getting the stuff ready. It wraps around and around. These are very, very important for the tip, for the ends of an arrow. It helps them spin and cut through the air. And the arrowhead is what would make um, the hunting easier. not. A larger arrowhead would cause a larger wound for a larger animal. But it has to be made just right, otherwise it won't pick up strength and fly properly. Archery is the one Pathfinder honor I never got. Mm. Because I learned everything, but at the very end you had to hit a target and you had to get at least 100 points with only like 10 or 15 arrows. I could never get enough strength. It's a lot of work. It's really hard. When it gets dark, we sit beside the water. I complain about how long it takes to prepare a kukwad, and he looks at me sternly and says, You are impatient. Wisdom of spirit and strength of body take a long time to achieve. Every small thing you learn must be learned well. Otherwise, you will have cracks like a hastily made machine. You must learn to be patient if you want to become a man or woman. Huh. Yeah. And listen to the night sounds and understand the truth of what Waban has said. I must also practice patience. After a time, we talk again. 
I ask about the coatmen and their visit to our place. Waban speaks of the land and the water and the many beings that inhabit them. There is enough for all people, he says. That is such a cool picture. With the two of them in a silhouette. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Very talented photographer. I ask Waban if I can share his fire since I am far from home. He welcomes me and gives me a skin. As I fall asleep, I go over the fletching in my mind. Tomorrow, I will show Newtimus what I've learned. I look up and see shapes in the stars, Mosque, the bear, and the three hunters. Waban's advice echoes in my thoughts. I say a prayer to Kitan and ask him to help me learn patience and to become a bnis. I am tired from hunting and fishing and thinking so much today. The warmth of the fire puts me to sleep. Uniuk. Well. Oh, and here is a map of where the Wampanoag Indian tribes would have been. So this is way up in the Northeast. This is what we would now say is the state of Massachusetts. And here's Rhode Island. Wow. This is interesting because it shows two names for each spot. Let me try and zoom in a little. Get it there. And I bet you the top one maybe is what the Native Americans called it. And the bottom num bottom name is what the um, pilgrims would have named it. How interesting. Oh, the, this map gives place names as they were known in the 1600s and underneath the names of the towns today. Cobnum lived in Namasket. Okay, so where is Namasket? I'm looking. Which is 15 miles of Patuxet. Where the English established their colony. Oh, there it is. Oh, also known as Plymouth. And there's Namasket. So yeah, they really weren't that far away. That is so interesting. Oh, how we know about the Wampanoag people. The Wampanoag culture is a living culture. Today, there are many Wampanoag people living in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Ooh, in order to find out how the people lived during the 1620s when the Europeans settled in Plymouth at Plymouth Plantation, that's where Sarah Morton's family was. Researchers gather information through archaeological digs. Ooh, pottery, jewelry, tools, and weapons that are dug up offer clues as to how the Wampanoag lived and stories passed from generation to generation tell of this. Ah, let me, there we go. Tell of heroes and gods, lowercase g, and the history of the people Researchers also turn to the written records of the first European colonists. These letters, diaries, and early histories of the European communities in the New World describe the native people, the clothes they wore, the crops they planted, and the food they ate, their government and social organizations, and their beliefs. It is clear from the documents that the colonists learned little about the Wampanoag. How sad. Early colonial practical application of Wampanoag knowledge was limited to raising native crops and travel. The colonists used the Wampanoag's extensive communication network of trails and waterways and adopted the use of dugout canoes. 
So they learned how they grew their crops, how they got around, and how they, we call it irrigation, how they got rainwater to their plants because they didn't have sprinklers, they didn't have water hoses, they just had when it rained or snowed and the water would melt. And, I, and they learned how to make those dugout canoes. People today have gained more practical knowledge from the Wampanoag than the early colonists did. And I think that really sums up why there were the biggest problems between the pilgrims and the Native Americans. The pilgrims saw brown people who dressed funny and they were scared. And this is now my land and they need to go away. And the Native Americans saw pale skin who wore funny looking clothes and were trying to steal the land. I mean, if we're honest, that's what they did. They came and this is where we're putting the fort. This is where we're gonna live. We don't care that this is where you farmed your food. Not very nice. Instead of getting to know each other and being respectful, they were not respectful. But we are very fortunate that we still have a handful of these cultures still around today. So we can learn to appreciate and not repeat the same mistakes. That's the most important thing. To learn from our history and not repeat the same mistakes. Be respectful of someone who's different, whether it's skin color, eye color, hair color, or they came from a different country. Learn something about them. Get to know them, appreciate them. Learn something and try to recreate it. That's the coolest thing about meeting people that are different or people with handicaps. They may not be able to help it. So we need to be respectful. Yeah, all in, mm -hmm. yeah. I had that experience when I was on my crutches. Sometimes the looks on people's faces when I'm hot, I was hobbling as fast as I could across the parking lot to get into Walmart. I would see people in their cars going, <sighs> didn't help that I was on crutches, I'd had surgery. You know, somebody who's on a scooter, somebody who's in a wheelchair, you don't know what their story is, we need to be respectful. And one thing I'm really proud about you guys is you already do that. I'm very, very proud of you for that. So let's spread more of that around the world. Yeah. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Store away some of that information for our research journal later. All right. And we'll see you later. You want to say bye? Bye. Bye.